Okay, I've just completed section two and I've included a transition sentence that indicates that we're going to be discussing the safe haven for glioblastoma patients during the soup and salad course. Now the reader knows that that's what's coming next. I decided to make this into two paragraphs. The first paragraph, and you can read this on your own, there's a PDF attached to this, uh, covers the setting for the soup and salad course. Now this paragraph is going to need an image, so I'm going to go out and find an image. See, that's the wonderful thing about a sentence outline, is you can see where you'll need to go back and put in an image. Now I'm going to start a new paragraph, and that starts with B. That indicates a new paragraph. I have completed a transition sentence while the adults dine on corned beef and cabbage soup and Irish pub salad. I tell them about plans for housing glass glioblastoma patients. Okay, this section describes a little bit about what geoblastoma is, and I know that I need to add a bit of an image, but I'm not going to get too much into the disease because I'm not conducting a fundraiser to support new research for the disease or treatments for the disease. I'm raising money for to create a safe haven for the patients and their families. So that's why I keep the focus on enough information to keep the reader informed, but not too much to get off topic. I need to stay on topic. Now one of the requirements is that two of the esteemed guests pipe in at this point and say something. So I say, uh, Saul Fisher, the esteemed philosopher, asks, why chlorophyll, though? Wouldn't these patients be better served in sanitariums? I think, I'm in present tense, I think about Saul's question when Yeats adds, Yeats adds, a question of his own. Tis better, methinks, to place the patients in structures of modern machines and treatments, lest he be, and I'm using quotes from a Yeats poem, maundering here and maundering there, empty of thought, than the heavenly circuit of the stars when the moon sails out. I found that poem by googling Yeats poems about suffering. And that's where this poem came up and of course I cited the page where I found that. So that's where this information came from. I pause for a moment and then speak carefully. In August of two 2018, I remark, American patriot John McCain ceased all treatment for his brain cancer. After his landmark Senate vote, months of intense therapy and surgery, he was tired. Knowing that the end was near, wouldn't it have been wonderful if McCain could have taken his entire family to a quiet and lovely Irish castle to relax and smell the fresh air? Paul Foster's doctor wanted more for his patients than relentless machines and family stress. And this is the doctor's quote. I encourage him to restore the castle. It's his passion, Zeus said. I tell the patients, don't just stay home and do nothing. That's not life. And that and these other quotes from Paul Foster came from the Houston Chronicle. Now, I want to make a point here about citations. I want to make sure that I give credit where credit is due for the ideas and the quotes that come from somewhere. Now this idea about McCain is my own idea. I'm making an emotional appeal and I remember that being a particularly uh, significant moment in American history when uh, despite his illness he showed up to make that vote in the Senate and so that's what I'm using. So I don't need to give any kind of quotes there because those are my own words, my own thoughts. The doctor for Paul Foster comes in to support what I just said. And then I'm going to insert this image of his last days where he made that infamous or famous Senate vote. I break the silence by inviting the children who have been waiting outside to, to the tent with the dance troupe to join the party for the main course. 
They enter in great fanfare with Irish music playing. They now have the hair ribbons for the girls and hats for the boys, and they bring smiles to faces as they dance through the presentation tent. It's time to bring the Corifan County Gateway community into the conversation. Because that's really all we have left to do. Let's look back up here at this, at our thesis statement. I always want to, I usually take this thesis statement, I print it out and I put it on the computer right next to what I'm doing. It keeps me on track. But we have already discussed the restoration of Corfin Castle as a safe haven. We've talked a little bit about the disease, the patients, the need for support. I'm passionate about a fundraising project that will raise the awareness. And the last thing I need to discuss is the Irish community and how this project is going to impact the community, jobs and money and opportunity and so forth. So that's all I have left to do other than the U2 concert, which I will be describing. So this section four is going to be a little different than the template. I'm still going to do everything that the template calls for, but I, I'm going to not need to do some of the things because I've already uh, addressed those issues in the salad and some of the other courses. So in the next tutorial, we'll be tackling this fourth point and seeing how we can restructure it to meet the needs of this particular persuasive essay. Remember, all of the windows that I opened to get the images to uh, find the information about the disease and so forth have all been cited on EasyBib. And I've already showed you how to do that, so I won't take time to do that now. That concludes this tutorial on Section 3.